Okay. You may have noticed something today that, of course, the theme of this event has been heart to heart. But for those of you that are fans, you probably also noticed that there has been an underlying theme of Star Trek. So as we look to the future, we want to aspire to a future where humanity has come together in peace and works for the betterment of the planet and looks towards new frontiers. So, we have another surprise for you. Jeff was up here a little bit earlier talking about our new corporate office in Utah. This is going to be uh, 25,000 25, square feet, and we have the entire top floor of this building. So when it's done, we hope that you will come and visit. And when you do, and we have our grand opening, you are going to be treated to an enormous brand partner welcome center. Now, when we were going through laying out the floor plan for this, and uh, I started speaking to the staff about this idea that I wanted to have a welcome center, so the idea would be brand partners come out to visit, they can hold meetings there, they can use our hologram technology that you've seen now to have meetings all over the world, but when you go into the Welcome Center, it should feel like you're stepping into the future, and why not have that Welcome Center look like something out of the 23rd century? So in order to do that, I started speaking with Jim Caldwell, who has connections in Hollywood, and as it turns out, we got someone from Star Trek to design it. So let me tell you about this person. His name is Doug Drexler. He has 43 years of experience in film and television. And he's been involved in makeup, conceptual design, illustration, graphics, and making full-scale models. Now, he has won both an American and British Academy Awards. And he's been nominated eight times for primetime Emmys, winning twice. He is a Saturn Award winner, a Visual Effects Society, and Peabody Award winner. Futurism has defined Doug, and he spent 20 years working on Star Trek. In fact, we had a very nice conversation about his relationship with Gene Roddenberry. So this goes back to the time of The Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, Voyager, Enterprise, Picard, Battlestar Galactica, and the Orville. So before we bring Doug out, we've prepared a special video to take a look at some of the things that he's done. So let's go ahead and take a look at that now.
and gentlemen, welcome to the stage, Academy Award winner and Star Trek legend, Doug Drexler. Amazing. Oh my God, it's so exciting to be here. I can't believe it. I, I, I'm so impressed. This is the first time I've been to one of the Lightwave con LifeWave conventions, and I'm just utterly blown away by the enthusiasm and the excitement in this room. And to be here is <laughs> just incredible. <laughs> you know, Doug, uh, we were talking backstage, so we started this project months ago, <laughs> and you've been absolutely incredible to work with. I can't tell you what a privilege it's been to work with him, it's a uh, for me. and you're going to see some of his work in just a moment. But you told me something backstage that I didn't know about you, and that has to do with uh, somebody that I very much looked up to, a guy by the name of Stan Lee. <laughs> uh, Tell us a little bit about uh, your encounter with Stan Lee. <laughs> well, you know, I, Stan is a hero of mine, and I guess I started reading Marvel like in 1959. And uh, he was writing stuff that had never been seen before in comic books. And um, my mother uh, thought comic books were evil, and she made me throw them all, <laughs> all away. Uh, but, but the thing was that, um, you know, I lived in New York City, and I was in Manhattan a lot, and we opened a store at, at 53rd and 3rd in Manhattan. It was a Star Trek store at a point where Star Trek was considered to be a failure, so Paramount didn't bother us. They didn't think it was worth anything. And we put a museum in the back of the store, and we had a press thing where we invited NBC and ABC and the newspapers and stuff like that. And of course, I invited Stan Lee. And to show you the kind of guy that he is, he came. And my mother was there, the lady who made me throw all my comic books away. <laughs> and I introduced my mother. I said, Mom, this is Stan Lee. And, Stan, and my mother put her finger in his face and said, you know, you had more to do with raising my son than I did. <laughs> and Stan, Stan said, the last lady who told me that, her son was in Sing Sing. <laughs> well, Doug, let's go over to, so we make sure that we leave enough time for this. Because oh. <laughs> uh, I know you've got a hundred stories got, to tell about, a million your, of them. about your career. Um, <laughs> But let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the concept first. So uh, we were connected uh, first. This was actually like a networking thing. I talked to Jim. Jim talked to one of his friends in L.A., uh, and then he connected us with you. So uh, talk about like when you approach that project of the Welcome Center, uh, they might want to start to see. Do we want to show them an image of the Welcome Center? I think we ought to. All right, let's go ahead. <laughs> you guys want to see the 23rd Century Welcome Center? <laughs> oh, wait, you know, I was supposed to get a clicker. Where's my clicker? You came out without the clicker. Well, I we can resolve it? that. We have hologram technology. We can beam the okay. clicker in. Or we can ask <laughs> this lovely lady. Thank you, Jenny. This is the clicker. To bring in the clicker. Okay, well, okay, that's an overview of the place. And actually, this isn't the, the space that we're going to be using. It was a space right. that we had had earlier on. So this was some concept art, right? Concept stuff. Yeah. Uh, basically, I guess I should move ahead here. If, if you look at the left side of the screen, you'll see this room that is completely white. And are we there? Okay. This first room, and I'll refer, with your permission, I'll refer to it as the hollow suite. Hollow suite works. Where... It's almost a white void where it, you're kind of, it's kind of cleansing your palate from the outside world to enter this world of life wave. And the only thing in that room, which is something that looks suspiciously like the monolith from 2001, <laughs> that this gentleman will beam in into that holographic booth yep. and impart knowledge, just like the monolith did. And basically, I think that was kind of our inspiration. It kind of organically grew into that. Um, yeah, the, so the idea is uh, we're going to have tours 
of the LifeWave office of the Welcome Center. So when you come in, there will be a hologram of me welcoming our new brand partners to our Welcome Center. So that's how we're going to utilize that space. Yeah. But um, what's really cool about this is that the, the way the walls are built out is you don't know that there's anything else beyond you, this. You don't know that... Well, you just look like you're in a room, but if we zip over here, which is one of the walls, these walls actually will rise up into the ceiling, revealing this tunnel. <laughs> that when you go in the tunnel, you're completely enveloped by this multi multimedia show that tells the story of Lightwave. Yeah, Th this is, uh, the tunnel is about 28 feet long and it's covered in uh, circular LEDs, right? LEDs that yeah, wrap around the Yeah, I mean, they have the LED screens now that are flexible, that you could bend into almost any shape. And as a matter of fact, even transparent, yeah. which we'll be using later on when we get into the other parts of the Welcome Center, but uh, we will eventually go in there, and you can see here's a view from inside where you've got all this amazing stuff happening, incredible fun graphics happening that will clue you everybody who comes to visit into all the excitement and the adventure of LifeWave. Yeah, so they come into this, and this is the opportunity to be learning about uh, our products, our business opportunity, and our humanitarian <laughs> work. So as people come into this part of the Welcome Center, because it's massive, again, I think most people would be thinking, oh, this is yeah, the Welcome Center. That has to be it. There can't be any more. Can't be any more. Uh, <laughs> but there's more. So what will happen is at the end of this tunnel, another door will open up. And uh, I'm just going to zip through here. Uh, the next room is kind of a cavalcade of LifeWave uh, products, and it's filled with data centers that will be interactive and will impart knowledge about all of the different amazing products that this guy has come up with. <laughs> it's really exciting. I, you know, it's such a privilege for me to do this. And it's just, you know, I mean, I've been a part of Star Trek for decades. And Star Trek is about uh, uh, potential, human potential, and the fact that the human adventure is just beginning. And that's what this is about, and that's what LifeWave is about. So when you get into this room, you're kind of thinking that maybe this is it, but there's another <laughs> whole other room beyond that where we have individual kiosks that put a spotlight on a lot of the interesting thing things that uh, are being worked on by David and crew. Uh, like, for instance, this is the kiosk uh, where we show the drone. Uh, your technological pegasus, I might say. Yeah. <laughs> so this will be uh, actually a scale model yeah. of our drone. It will have a five or six foot wingspan. So it's actually quite big. And uh, we'll see how it ultimately works out. But the, the current concept is to kind of have this upright on a turntable where it's moving around, so you can see it from different angles. And we have, these, um, we have these LED displays that tell you all about humanitarian projects and how we're using the drone. That yeah, way. I mean, uh, when I mentioned the transparent uh, LED screens, those will be used extensively here surrounding the thing with, with cascading uh, graphics happening on it. Uh, it's really going to be... Uh, uh, real exciting to look at, and actually, it's one of my favorite things in it. But there's, but there's still more to come. Uh, for instance, this is a kiosk that uh, focuses on the new energy systems that David is working on. But we're not going to say too much of that we're right now, right? Talk too much about it, no. But I mean, ultimately, the aesthetic design of it, uh, you know, the the way the data. Uh, interfaces wrap around it. I mean, this thing has a kind of a vortex. I'm not supposed to talk about that. Right. But but anyway, yeah. that, I, that wasn't I, I, that wasn't very good. Um. <laughs> I, I, I I love this thing. I, I think it's really cool. Uh, so there is that, and then we'll have that kind of energy core floating in the center there, and I think right. it's going to be awesome. Yeah, I think it's awesome. Awesome. <laughs> uh, 
We also have, and I'll move on to this. Now, 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 now. Am I going back? It, no, no, no. You're, do, you're doing fine. Oh, okay. uh, so there's something in this picture that we can't talk about. Do I know about it? No. <laughs> no. That, that's, what, that's what has me very concerned. Um, <laughs> so I think what you could talk about are the, the fruits and vegetables on the end. <laughs> that would be safe. But talking about the thing in the middle is probably something we're not going to talk about. I can't talk about that. Um, sorry. <laughs> I don't even know what he's talking about, so I can't, <laughs> I, I, I can't, I can't give away anything. I, I would if I could, but... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this is our agricultural center, and uh, we've been, it's no surprise, we've been developing new technology uh, to grow fruits and vegetables in an entirely different way and to give them properties that you wouldn't normally find. And uh, we want to have a section of the Welcome Center to uh, feature this future technology. So I think that's safe. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's all we can say about that. Yeah. Let's see, Again, what, let's see what lies beyond this. It makes me this. thirsty. I really could use a drink of water right now. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm going to move on to the next... <laughs> The, the ne oh, did I hit the right button? Oh, there we go. This is just another view uh, yep. uh, of the overall, where we have the, 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 what do you refer to it as? The, 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 the whirl, the petals, the flower thingy on the top. Well, anyway, that, that is thing the on the roof. That is the LifeWave X39 logo, That's and, it, and it, it. Is, it is nothing more than that. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's all very exciting. Um, this is just a sneak peek of it. We're still working on it. There's yep. a lot of development still to come. And uh, we just thought that it would be really fun to sh give you guys a little bit of a look at it at this point. Yeah, so Doug, I have a big round of applause for Doug Drexler on that. It's been amazing. Um, so Doug, let's talk a little bit more about something. I mean, you've done an incredible oh, oh, job Oh, can on I this. finish my Stan Lee story? Okay, finish your Stan Lee story. Sorry about that. I saw Stan uh, a few years before he passed. A friend of mine, Barbara Luna, who was on the original Star Trek as the captain's woman, who's one of my dearest friends, um, she knew that uh, I love Stan, and she did an autograph show, a Hollywood autograph show at LAX, and she said, Stan is going to be there. You should come down and see him. And I'm like, of course, uh, I'm there. And I went, and he's in the green room, and the guy's like 96 years old, and he's like the ever-ready Energizer bunny. He's back there cracking jokes and signing things, and uh, he's just the most amazing guy. And one of his talents, and kind of like this guy here, is that he will make anyone he's talking to feel like the most important person in the room. Yeah. And they're really amazing. So... You know, we, we chatted with him, and we took some pictures with him, and I said, Stan, I just, back in 1977, and I told the story about the museum opening, how he came, how my mother was there, she stuck her finger in his face and said, you had more to do with raising my son, and he said, the last woman who told me that, her son was in Sing Sing, and he, he roared at his own joke, and it was a pretty good joke. And uh, I said to him, Stan, I just wanted to let you know that you were my surrogate father. And he was touched. I, I felt pretty sure he heard that before, but, you know. And so, uh, as time went on, we all started mixing and moving around again. And uh, about 20 minutes later, his handler comes in and says, Stan, we have to get you to the airport and get you to your plane. And so he's heading out, and I want to say something else to him, and I'm thinking, you know, he's 96 years old, he just met 100 people, he's probably forgotten we even had a conversation. And as he's reaching for the doorknob, he stops, he turns, finds me, and says, goodbye, my surrogate son. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the Thank kind of guy he that. was. So, Doug, as we get ready to wrap up, uh, one thing I think that is in incredibly important, you have achieved the absolute pinnacle of success in your industry. And uh, I would imagine you had a very supportive family uh, growing up that, that supported your dreams, right? I, the thing is, is that my, both my parents were Depression-era kids, and then World War II happened, and, you know, it's like, I think the attitude was, I mean, they weren't stopping me, but their attitude was, you know, get your head out of the clouds, and 
Uh, that, that's crazy stuff. No one does that kind of thing. And, and I have to say that one of the things that David said that really strikes me is that, and not that my parents made fun of me, although my father did say, <laughs> if you spent half as much time on your schoolwork as you did on a TV show, you'd be okay. And he did go with me to the Academy Awards, so... Ladies and gentlemen, another big round of applause for Doug Drexler. Doug, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Doug. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.